Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're going to talk about some QuickBooks reporting tips and tricks, some things that are going to make it a little easier for you to make QuickBooks go hmm. Making QuickBooks sing. Ultimately, the purpose of putting all this stuff into QuickBooks that we put in, we're writing checks, recording invoices, we're entering bills, and we're recording the payments on those bills. All of it is great stuff to put into QuickBooks, but ultimately, the purpose of putting it in is so that we can get information out of it. You've heard the expression probably a 100,000 times, enough that you never want to hear it again, but you're about to hear it again. Garbage in equals garbage out which really literally translated here is, is very literally true. If I put garbage into QuickBooks, then what I'm going to get out of it is garbage. In other words, the information it gives me about the financial position of my company or my personal finances, if I'm using it for that, is garbage. It doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't give me information I can really rely on. So it's important that we have accurate information going in, and I've written a ton about this. It's all out there on the web, but email me if you'd like some specific information about where to go to, to get that kind of information. Today, we're focusing on the output. What do we get out of QuickBooks once we're assured that we have reliable and valuable information going into QuickBooks? And that, of course, is entirely going to rest in the report section of QuickBooks, which I've selected up here. Now, I'm looking at the accountant's edition in a sample company file. And if you have one of those industry-specific editions, then you're going to have a reporting section specific to that industry. So if you're in the contractor's edition, you'll have contractor reports in here. If you're in the nonprofit edition, you'll have nonprofit reports, and so on. You get the point. So really what you want to do in general terms is focus on this area and learn as much as you can about how to run these reports and, more importantly, how to tweak them so that you can get the information that you're specifically looking for out of QuickBooks. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes here today in this screencast. So let's start off with the standard. We've got company and financial, and of course, everybody wants to run their profit and loss. They want to know how much money did I make. And I can uh, link you, wherever this is posted, to a discussion on a website that I participated in called Focus.com talking about which are the most important of the financial statements. And because a lot of people go right to the profit and loss, and what they don't realize, and you'll see it as evidenced by the uh, opinions expressed in this discussion, frankly, that the profit and loss perhaps is the least important of all the financial statements. The balance sheet, they're all important. Don't get me wrong. You have to look at all the reports. But the profit and loss probably among them is the least important. The balance sheet is probably the most important. A lot of people were also saying that the statement of cash flows is a really important statement to uh, look at. But the statement of cash flows is a little harder for a lot of people to understand. So we tend to shy away from it. And we tend not to talk about it so much. And I don't want to get into the statement of cash flows for this purpose. So I'm going to close it. What I want to show you in this in this screencast is how to get into reports like this and tweak them. So first I'm going to show you a trick that I show a lot of people anytime I do a screencast or any kind of instruction on reporting in QuickBooks. First thing I like to show you is you run a profit and loss. Let's say we run it for last fiscal year. And remember this is a sample file so the dates are in the future. And we can take this drop down here where it says columns and drop it down to month. So it totals by month. And right away, this gives us much more meaningful information. Let's change this to this fiscal year so that it has more months that have information in them. And as you can see right away, it gives you some really good, useful information for analytical purposes, which is, again, yes, we want the reports so we can file a tax return, but then internally we want reports that give us good information. And another thing that uh, that we can do is we can hit this collapse button, makes it a, condenses things, makes it a little easier to read. But I want to get into even more stuff than that. Let's see if they're using classes in the sample company file. It looks like they are. So we can run a profit and loss by class. Now that shows me, based on these classes we've assigned, how much on every P&L account exists in each class. And then it shows me unclassified, which means this income, for example, has not been assigned a class. But what if I want to create a report that I want to go back to because I just want to look at the base or store class? Well, I can come here to modify report. And when I click modify report, I get this dialog up. And this is where all the information lives in terms of the reporting world that I want to be able to get familiar with so I know how to change things. So the first thing I want to do if I'm looking to chisel a report down to something like just one class is I want to go to my filters tab. And then I want to find in my choose filter list here, I want to find the class. I choose class, and I drop this down, and I choose Bayshore Store. And then I click OK. 
and I have just the base shore store and a, and a totals. You can't avoid that. It's going to be the total. It's going to be one and the same. But now I have a report title that says profit and loss by class. It doesn't really tell me more specifically what this is. So maybe I want to change the report title. Maybe I want to call this profit and loss base shore store. Click OK. And now it changes my report title. Basically, in the report, you can change these three lines. And you've got them here. If you go to modify your report, you go to your header footer tab. We have the company name, which you can put anything you want there. It doesn't have to be the company name. I can put, for example, I love Chris Perillo right there instead of the company name. And I can put that right in the report there. I love Chris Perillo, Profit and Loss Bay Shore Store. And then it gives me the dates, but I can change what goes there in the dates. Maybe I don't want to show the dates. Maybe I don't care to show the dates there. Maybe I want to put something else, a special report. OK, see, so you can change these things. You can also right click anywhere on the report and you have choices in terms of the font sizes and so on and so forth. Those can also be changed right here in the modify report by going to fonts and numbers. Same thing and you can specify which fonts you're going to change the settings for. Another good way to run reports sometimes, let's close all of these, we won't save anything, might be so you go to reports and just go to custom transaction detail report. Let's say I want to do a report on a specific vendor and I want to see everything that was ever paid to this vendor. Well I come into display and I choose my date range and set it for all dates. Filters, I go to a name and let's find a name in the vendor center. Let's just pick on somebody. Let's pick on Jason Chansey. Click OK and now it gives me a report on everything that was ever paid to him. Note, it, note that it gives me all transaction types. So this isn't necessarily, the totals aren't necessarily everything that was paid to him. It could be misleading. So you have to pay attention to your parameters here. I've got a bill and I've got a bill payment. So two different transactions really representing the same amount that he was paid, which is just $400. So let's say I want to limit this to just what he was paid. I can go to modify report, go to my filters, transaction type. Come down here and I only want to see bill payment. Click OK and sure enough it updates and it says bill payment and now I know my totals are truly what he was paid. Now on the off chance that he was also possibly paid just by check not just and not just a bill payment then I come to transaction type and instead of just choosing one from here and this option is available for all filters I choose multiple in this case it's multiple transaction types then it gives me a list to check off so I want to see checks and I want to see bill payments is already checked off because I had it selected from before. So QuickBooks figures, I want to see that still. And then in the event that it's possible I paid him by credit card, I might want to check that off, credit card. And then if I think I got refunds, you can keep going with this. The point is to really go through your options here in your display. The display shows you what I can have appear on the report. The filter is how I can limit that report to show only specific information, like we've done here, the name. If I want to change this to show a different name, I just come here to the filters. I select the filter for the name, which is already there in the current filter choices. I drop this down and I say, let's change this and look at it for Daigle Consulting. And same thing, I got just one bill payment for these guys. So that's how you're going to want to play around with and get familiar with reports. There's lots of options in here, and there's a ton of reports to go through. So I strongly urge you, on your own, to go in and tweak these reports. Go play with them. See what kind of information they give you. You can go into your banking menu, and you can see reconciliation discrepancy, which will show you, for a specific bank account, any changes that might have been made that could throw off your reconciliation. For example, if somebody deleted a cleared transaction, Action, it will show up here in this report. So there's lots of reports that you want to play with and once you get comfortable with modifying the report, I'll show you one last thing. We're going to go into a little bit of overtime here because I think this is really important, especially for a free screencast. It's just something powerful that you can do. The newer versions of QuickBooks starting in 2010 had the Report Center which gives you a nice graphical interface but in my personal opinion it's not as practical as simply going to reports memorize reports and your memorize report list right here 
when you click that, let me close the report center, you get everything the report center gives you in a much more quick and concise layout, personally. But now once I'm here, I can go memorize report, choose a new group, and call it Chris Perillo. Chris Perillo's reports. So if I was setting up reports especially for Chris Perillo, I would put Chris Perillo's reports as a group. Then I would say, let's run that profit and loss by class. And let's filter it down once again to uh, just Bayshore. We just want to see the Bayshore store. OK. And then I come back into modifier. I didn't have to close it. I could keep changing all these options right here. But I can copy the Bayshore store filter there and paste it in here and just call it Bayshore store. And then I say memorize. And I choose Save and Memorize Report Group. And it already figures I want it in Chris Perillo's reports because I just made that report group. I click OK. And then I can go to View and Open Window List so I can see what's available here, what's, what I've opened, and go to my Memorize Reports. The other thing I can do now is go to View and add Memorize Reports to the Reports uh, to the icon bar. And there's one in particular that I like to choose for this purpose, which is this guy here. So now, the next time I want my Memorize Reports, I come here. Chris Perillo's Reports, Bayshore Store, double click. There it is. And of course, we can go back in here. And let's say later on, I want to make another change. Like I want that, that again to say, I love Chris Perillo. I click OK. And then I can memorize this, and I can choose Replace. So it'll replace the existing memorized report so that the next time I run it, it will come up with the appropriate heading based on what I've chosen to have it do. So I think that's a good start for uh, how to play around with memorized reports or, or customizing reports or tweaking reports to get them to give you the output that you need, the output that's going to give you the most meaningful information about your finances, about your financial information. The most meaningful financial information for you is going to be based on what you set up because you know better than anyone else what information is meaningful to you so it's helpful to learn how to play around with these reports as always if you want additional training on this you can call me at 866-945-8070 and I can arrange a private session I can send you a link you share your screen with me and I'll walk you through more of this stuff and how to play with the reports and get the reports set up to give you the information that you need for your business or as I said before your personal finances in case you should want to use QuickBooks for your personal finances which in my opinion it's a great tool for that very purpose. So uh, again, 866-945-8070. Give me a call or visit me on the web at www.nerdenterprises.com. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.